Good morning, Life Church. Thank you for joining with us this morning to exalt the Lord. Let's stand this morning. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. Let's welcome the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to set us free. Bring truth that we might stand strong today. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb. Till I met you, yeah. I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was. Run for cover. 
But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven Yeah, my praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony. This is my testimony. Hey. Hey, from death to life. Come together, sons and daughters. Come with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. We'll finish what he started. Oh, our God, we'll finish what he started. This is my testimony from death to life. This grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. You're not done. And greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. And greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony oh I'm alive this is my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Hey, hey. Death to life. Hey. Death to life. 
all my life. That's only 47 years, Pastor Mark. Some others have been a little longer. And for some others, it's only been a couple days. But all my life, God has been faithful. Mm. And you may have come in here this morning questioning God, God, where are you? And he says, I'm right there. I'm right there. I'm still faithful. When you don't see that I'm working, when it doesn't feel like I'm working, I'm still working. Because the God that I worship, the God that I praise this morning, is a God that works 24-7. Can you imagine? It's, there's no naps in heaven. There's going to be partying and celebrating and worshiping. Them angels, I don't know how they sing 24-7. But I want to be right with them. I want to be where God is. I want to be what God is doing. I want to be about what God is doing. Because all my life, he's been faithful. And in return, I want to give back to God this morning. I want to give him. Just raise your hands this morning. All around this house. Tasha, sing that again. All my life, you've been faithful. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so my wife to join me and I didn't tell her this. This morning as we were preparing to come to service, I felt the need that we needed to pray for our schools. I know they're on spring break. We're going to pray for our schools this morning. My wife's a teacher. We're going to our revival prayer this morning is that God would move amongst our campuses. that God would break out in our campuses. We're seeing it happen, folks. It's happening. Father, we pray for revival on this land here today in Howard County. Father, we know that you are already moving. You've not stopped moving. You are moving right now. We pray for every church in this community that is declaring and lifting up the name of Jesus. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would fill their sanctuaries, that you would fill their places of worship this morning. That, God, that there would be a move of your Holy Spirit across this land. And right here on this campus, right here at Life Church, Lord, do it here. Do what only you can do right here this morning. The north, the south, the east, and the west, Lord, go to every end of this county and touch hearts and lives. And, Father, this morning we lift up our schools this morning. We pray for Big Spring ISD and Fort San ISD and Cahoma ISD. We have some folks from Stanton and Grady and all those surrounding areas, Westbrook. We pray for Runnels Classical Academy right here on this campus. And Lord, we say, fill these, these schools for your glory and your honor. That you would move and touch the hearts of kids, teachers, administration. Lord, do all this for your glory and your honor. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Before you're seated, greet five people and tell them you're glad that they're here in the house.
Hallelujah. It's good to see some faces this morning. I'm glad you all set your times forward like you're supposed to. I was teasing with the group earlier this morning. I was going to take a picture and send a picture to Pastor Kevin. I said, this is what your service looks like after daylight savings time, and this is what it looks like before daylight savings time. But I'm so glad we have a crowd, and we're glad you're here this morning, so we welcome all of you today. This morning, uh, Pastor Kevin is out, and so we have the joy of having our worship pastor bring us the word, bring us the word this morning. Will you please welcome Pastor Mark Seagraves to the pulpit this morning. All right, wow. I think I know how these work, but I don't. Wow. All right. Wow. 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 It's good to see everybody in the house today. And uh, just a quick vote. How many of you think that whoever invented daylight savings time should be shot? All right. Thank you. And uh, we'll get that right into the Texas legislature. Make sure they move forward on, <laughs> on getting that changed up. Wow, it's been a great, great uh, week. God has done some uh, amazing things just in the last several days, and uh, we had a fantastic beginning to our uh, marriage life group uh, last Tuesday night. I think we had somewhere around 50 people, and there's more that are coming, so that's awesome, right? <clears throat> so just in case, I can't remember if Pastor Manny already said it. He probably did, uh, but no group this week because of spring break, and then we'll be back uh, the following week and so forth. So, um, yeah, going to be good. I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I've just been thinking about this. I am so thankful for our church family. Amen. I'm thankful that we can uh, gather together, that we can worship together, uh, that we can hear the word of the Lord together, uh, that we can serve together. We're just better together. Anybody say amen to that? So, uh, yeah, I, I was actually thinking about how easy it is to be caught up in all of the, the junk that's going around. Uh, I Actually, I feel like the Lord's been kind of talk, talking to me lately about, like, how about disconnecting from the news for just, just a moment? How, would, how healing would that be to our psyche, right, to our, to our spirit, just to let go of, of the news? We can get so caught up in that. Everything around us seems so volatile and so chaotic, uh, but during those times, man, there is just no place I would rather be than in the house of God with the people of God and worshiping God. Amen. Uh, yeah, I was thinking there's just so much going on from, hi, I'll take three. That is awesome. Uh, yeah, just so, much, so many things. Vir you know, uh, viruses running around the world, social, political unrest, weird uh, weather anomalies. Do you guys remember the bomb cyclone that hit here in December? You guys remember that? It got so freezing and California's flooding. I mean, we could get so caught up in, uh, you know, fearful emotions and all that kind of stuff. But I have some good news for you. Uh, Manny and, and Nicole, uh, we enjoyed some lunch with them on Friday. And, uh, I'm not sure this was the Lord that was speaking, but it sounded kind of like him. So I'll share with you what I think was being said. On all of the junk going around, it's kind of like I heard this word as a result of our conversation on Friday. It's like, don't be discouraged by the left or the right. Don't fear the up or the down. I have sent unto thee help from far away from a distant land, and I will show you my favor, and you will taste and see that the Lord is good, for there is a Chick-fil-A coming to Big Spring. <laughs> Did you guys see that? Christian chicken coming to Big Spring. I think construction begins in June. I will be parked outside while they're constructing, waiting on them. To open the doors. Look at somebody right next to you and just tell them real quick, I am feeling really hungry right now. Worms, yeah, worms, worms braining in China. I saw a picture of that. Wow. Well, with all of this going on, it wasn't very long ago that I was sitting at home and just 
considering this present reality, and I realized that something was just stirring on the inside of me, and I, I really, I can only describe it as uh, a longing, as a desire for something, and um, as I was sitting there and feeling that, I found myself going to a section of the Bible that, to be honest, I had not uh, taken the time to read in a little while. I found myself at the very end of the Bible, at the end of the book of Revelation, and I, I just couldn't stop pouring over chapter 21 and chapter 22. And uh, as I'm reading it, it was like that the desire, whatever it was that was kind of welling up on the inside of me, just kept growing. And so I want to share just a few words from uh, these chapters. Uh, John chapter 21 begins with this vision that John is seeing. He says this, now I saw a new heaven. Everybody say a new heaven. And a new earth. Everybody say new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So John is seeing this prophetic vision of what is to come, and then he hears a voice, and he says, I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. So I'm reading this, and, and I, I, I recognize that my heart, my physical heart, was actually pounding as I'm reading those words, and it just connected that this is what I'm longing for. Manny was talking about this, this incredible thing that we have uh, in the future, this, this heaven, this experience, this life with God for eternity. That's really what I'm longing for. It, it's what's in my heart, and that's not even all of it. John hears this voice continue, and, and wow, this is just amazing. He says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. So if you read on from there, you'll see a description of the New Jerusalem in all of its glory. You'll see a description of the river of life, and it says that there will be a tree of life. This is Revelation 22 and verse 2, and it says, in the middle of its street, and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. How many of you think our nations could use some healing from God? So Revelation 22 ends with a declaration that the time is near, that the Lord is coming quickly, and you're left on the edge of your seat almost looking to the sky in hope for what is to come. And it's, it's this knowledge, it's this certainty that there is a kingdom that is not of this world, that there is a king, and I, I haven't seen his face yet, but I'm going to know him when I see him. I actually think that it's this anticipation that is at the core of everything that we are as followers of Jesus. We live in this world, and yet we know that there is more. And so I'm reading this, and I'm considering where we're at in 2023. Can you believe it's already March of 2023? Anybody remember 2020 and Y2K and the fear and all the computer stuff? And here we are in 2023, and I'm getting this sense that there is an awakening desire for this kingdom, that there is an awakening desire for this king. 
And what's amazing about it is it's not just in the hearts of believers. It's everywhere. And it's in everything. The whole world, all of creation, fallen humanity, redeemed humanity, we are all straining toward something better. If you read the words of Paul in Romans chapter 8, one of my very favorite chapters in the entire Bible, Paul says this, For we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. Something going on in the world around us that's like a longing, like an agonizing, like a groaning towards what is to come. And he goes, goes on to say, just, just to note that this is talking about the, the non-believing world, the, the created world around us and those who live in it apart from a relationship with God. But he does go on to say in the next verse, and we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us, which is a foretaste of future glory. And having the Holy Spirit in our life right now is an amazing thing, and I, I, I recommend it. <laughs> In all of its fullness because God wants you to have it. He literally says, I'm going to make my spirit available to anybody that will put their faith and their trust in me. But that spirit, as glorious as it is, is just a foretaste of a future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We long for it. It's, it's a part of being a follower of Jesus. It, it's, a part of, it's a part of having faith and hope for the future. He says, we too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies he has promised us. Anybody in the market for a new body? Because I'm serious. I told Robin the other day, if I get to heaven and this is what I've got for eternity, me and God are going to have a little talk. I want a new body. <laughs> Can't wait for that. So I'm trying to make sense of what's happening around us. And if you watch the news, you listen to the news, you read the news, it can be so discouraging because there's just so much going on. And I think that in all of this, that the world is longing for a life that is free. I'm talking about unbelievers, we, we all long for it as believers, but there's something going on in the hearts of people all around the world that they long for a life that is free of Viruses, for one thing, but free of sickness and free of disease and free of a life that is character, characterized by grief because of death, longing for a world that is free from violence and hatred. And I see all of the things that are stirred up, and to the believers, to the followers of Jesus, we look at people that are out in the world that are trying their best to figure out their life, try to figure out who they are, try to figure out laws that will help society function, and we see all kinds of, all of these activities, people, and man, they get themselves into trouble, and it looks awful, and so many mistakes are made, and all of that, but what's really going on on the inside of them is that the whole creation is groaning and straining toward the coming kingdom and toward the coming king. The issue is that they don't know what they're straining for. They don't know what they're longing for. They're literally in this vacuum trying to figure it out, and they don't know that Jesus is the answer, that the Word of God has hope, that the Holy Spirit is available. They don't know all of this, and so they go about their secular pagan life trying to figure it out. And, of course, we can sit back in judgment of them, but the truth is everything that they're doing they're doing, in a sense, to find wholeness and healing. Without knowing it, they are straining 
towards the kingdom. And so you look around us and the secular systems are trying to fix the problems of our very broken world. How do we handle the aftermath of a global pandemic? How do we keep people safe? How do we keep people employed? I'm, I'm talking about the kinds of problems that the secular world is trying to figure out. How do we keep people alive? How do we handle this intensifying hatred that we're seeing between people and groups of people? How, how can we get to a place where we just stop murdering one another and start loving one another? The, the world is grappling with this. They're struggling with this, and they really don't have answers. <laughs> And so people in powerful places, from politicians to researchers to leaders to corporate executives, they're trying to figure all of this out. And sometimes they come up with an idea that makes things a little bit better. Sometimes they come up with an idea that makes things incredibly worse. But in the midst of all of that, there are people around the world. There's a global body of people that put their faith and their trust in Jesus. And in the midst of all of these things, the reason that we turn our hearts and our eyes to heaven is because only the one on the throne can say, Behold, I make all things new. Would you just look at somebody next to you and show them your teeth and tell them God can make it new? Would you tell them that? God really can make it new. If you didn't brush your teeth today, I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, it is right for us to long for that day. It really is. It's right for us to do what the Scriptures say and to lift up our eyes for our redemption is drawing nigh. But I want to encourage somebody today. I want to tell somebody today, yes, that... That is going to be an incredible day and we are going to get there and it is the birthright of every believer to be filled with hope and the anticipation of that coming kingdom. But there is another side to that coin. There is another side to that story. Because in one sense, God's kingdom is coming. But in another sense... God's kingdom is already here. And so if you are a follower of Jesus today, or maybe you're here and you're just, you're just checking out this, this thing, you're checking out faith, you're checking out church, I just ask that you would open up your ears and your heart to the words of Jesus for just a moment as we think not just about what he's going to do, but what he wants to do right now. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17, Jesus, it says, for that time, from that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Everybody say, has come near. Jesus is not talking about something here on the calendar. He's not talking about it getting close in terms of a day that is soon to come or a week or a month away. He's not talking about close as a calendar. He's talking about close in proximity. It's not far. It's not distant. We don't need to think of the kingdom as that way in terms of space or time. He actually teaches us to pray in this moment, Matthew 6, in this manner. Therefore, pray our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Listen, I realize with all of the stuff that's going on around us, we can be tempted to focus on praying prayers of escape. God, get me out of here. God, I really don't want to have to deal with another global issue. God, I don't want to have to deal with political unrest. God, I don't want to have to deal with all of this just junk that's going on around the world, so get me out of here. Jesus says, no, I don't have a prayer of escape for you to pray. I have a prayer of manifestation for you to pray. I want you to pray, God, let your kingdom appear right here, right now, right where I am. And Jesus is saying, pray that way. And here's something important for us to consider. If Jesus says to pray that way, then it's the will of God 
that we pray that way and that that prayer is answered. John said this, 1 John 5, he says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. So if we pray your kingdom come, we are confident that that is the will of God and that his kingdom will come. So let's, let's just see how close this kingdom really is and how its manifestation is even possible. Jesus said, Luke 17, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here, see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. That's not very far. That's not distant. That's not about time. He's like, there is something that I have planted within you. I want you to think about kingdom for just a moment. A kingdom is a domain of rule. It's a domain of authority. And a kingdom has a king. And by the way, just, just a revelation, the king is not us. Everybody say, I'm not the king. Look at your neighbor say, you're not either. There's one king that sits on the throne, and there's a kingdom, and he says that kingdom is within you. So yes, there is a kingdom that is coming, but there is a place of the rule and the reign of God, and it is within us, and if we will allow the one who sits on the throne to dictate the direction of our thoughts and our words and our life, we are going to begin to experience the next life in this life. Because I don't know if you realize this or not, but you know we think about heaven as the beginning of eternal life. You're already experiencing eternal life. If you've put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ, you have been born again and you are now alive. I realize our flesh is decaying, but your spirit has been regenerated. That's not degenerated. It's regenerated and it is alive and it is forever in the presence of God. It's connected with God. You're already experiencing eternal life. And there may come a day when this flesh just gets so tired that it ends up passing uh, from this life. But you will go on. You are already living your eternal life now. And so the encouragement that God says is that, yes, there is a place in that other world, a place of no tears, a place of no sorrow, a place of no, none of all, there's no IRS in heaven. Somebody said hallelujah. (laughs) I was going to say, let's bring that kingdom into this kingdom, but that may sound like I'm saying just ignore the IRS. They're not in heaven, so they're not here either. (laughs) Jesus did say, give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar, so make sure you do that part as well. But here's a principle that I want us to grasp today. This is is the big thing that I want us just to hold on to, that as a follower of Jesus Christ, I anticipate the fullness of the coming kingdom. I anticipate it, but I also participate in its present reality. It's coming, but it's also present. And so I just want to give you a couple of easy, simple thoughts about how to do this, how to see the kingdom of God established both within us and around us. And the first thing that I have to do is I have to follow the example of Jesus. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you what I mean here from John chapter 5. If you've ever read John 5, it starts with this story of this man who goes to the pool of Bethesda. In fact, I think he was carried there probably because he couldn't get there himself. And it was this pool that had this reputation that an angel would come down at certain seasons and would trouble the water and the first person who was ill, sick, had something wrong physically, etc., if they would get into the water, the first person to get into that water would be healed. And so he would lay there beside the pool of Bethesda with hundreds of other people that were also there because they wanted healing, but his condition was such that when the waters were troubled, he could not get to the water. And Jesus comes by and he sees him and he gets into this conversation with him and he asks him what's going on. And the man says, I, I, I'm sick, but I can't get down there to the water whenever it's troubled and I don't have anybody to take me down there. And Jesus in that moment speaks a word to that man 
It says, take up your mat, walk, go home, you're healed. It's interesting because that notable miracle happened on the Sabbath. It happened on what was the day of rest for the people of Israel. According to the law of Moses, according to God's command to them, they were to take a day out of the week, every week, and they were to rest. They weren't to do any work. And so as this man is being healed, I mean, this guy has been there for who knows how long, and he's healed, he's restored, he's delivered, he's set free. He jumps up, rolls his mat up, walks away. It's a miracle. And the religious people standing around are like, what are you doing? It's Sunday. <laughs> Actually, it would have been Saturday, but we're not supposed to work. On the Sabbath, and here you are healing somebody. You're working. You ever notice, like all throughout the Gospels, Jesus would do stuff awesome, and it didn't matter what day of the week it was. The religious people could find some reason to gripe about it. The power. In fact, there's one verse. This is totally off the subject. Just came to my my mind. Maybe it's for somebody, but there's one verse that actually says that the the power of the Lord was present to heal. But Jesus had to speak because he could hear the thoughts that were in the hearts of the religious people as they were saying, I don't believe God does anything. I don't believe God's going to do anything today. But it said the power of the Lord was present to heal. So Jesus does this on the Sabbath, and they, they accuse him. And Jesus has to, in that moment, respond to these accusations. And so this is what he says. And I'm talking about following the example of Jesus. How did Jesus live out the kingdom that was within him and around him? And how did he bring the kingdom? How did he manifest the kingdom? How did he establish it in the world? Jesus says this, I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. You read that context right before that. He said, my father was working, so I was working. Hmm. So whatever the father does, the son also does. If you skip down to verse 30, he says, I can do nothing on my own initiative. Just as I hear, I judge, and my just judgment is just because I do not seek my own will, but the one of him who sent me. Verse 49, for I have not spoken from my own authority, but the Father himself who sent me has commanded me what I should say and what I should speak. I'm talking about following the example of Jesus. So I realize, guys, there's a, there's a lot going on here when it comes to who God is and what God is and the Godhead and all of that. We know that Jesus was fully God and we know that Jesus was fully man. But there's something about the incarnation, Jesus coming and walking among us as a man. There's something about the incarnation where Jesus intentionally and purposefully limited himself to the parameters of humanity. In other words, as he is walking around and he is ministering, he's not doing so declaring, I am God. He is showing us what an anointed man can do when he's full of the Holy Spirit and following the voice of God. If you ever wonder about that, think about this. If Jesus is God in flesh, and yet he says, the Son can do nothing by himself. He's God in flesh, and he says, I don't do anything on my own initiative. He's God in flesh, and yet he says, I don't seek my own will, but the one of him who sent me. He, he doesn't try to operate in his own authority. He says, I'm operating in the authority of the one who sent me. So this is the example of a man who is submitted, and he is listening for the voice of God. If you have any just questions about what that looks like in, in terms of him limiting himself, to the experience of what it meant to be a man. Go to Philippians chapter 2 sometime, called the kenosis passage, the self-emptying, where it says even though he was in the form of God, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation and being found in the form of a servant, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And it was because of that that God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, of things in earth, of things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The whole the whole idea of him being powerful and anointed was because he was submitted, not because he was trying to operate in his own power. <laughs> we know it was a great example because right after he did all of these things, his disciples did the same stuff. They raised the dead. They healed the sick. They cleansed the lepers. 
So Jesus says, I'm not trying to do this in my own power or through my own agenda. I'm listening for a voice. The only way for the kingdom of God to be manifested in me and through me is to be sensitive in the moment to what God is doing right now. There are, there are, listen, there are principles in the Bible that tell us we can do certain things no matter what and no matter when. Like we have stuff in the, the epistles that tell us if somebody is sick, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them pray for him. Let, let them anoint him. Let them pray for him. Okay, we don't, we, we don't need to hear the voice of God to tell us to call for the elders of the church to pray for somebody because we have a word from God already in the Bible that says call for the elders of the church. Let them pray. But listening for the voice of God in the moment is something different. It's something as you're going about your day, as you're getting up in the morning and you've got your kids in front of you, or you're getting ready for work, or you go to work, or you're at school, or wherever you might be, and you're literally in the moment and you're saying, what is God saying to me right now? The result of him listening to the voice, this is a description, I love this, in Matthew 9. It says, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. He said in Matthew 12, 28, but if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. In other words, these are the kinds of things that can happen right now. It's not reserved just for the next life. It's not reserved just for heaven. It, it can happen right now as we manifest the kingdom of God around us by listening to the voice of God. But the second thing that I want to give you in this, I'm, I'm going to start wrapping this up. The second thing that I do, not, not just following the example of Jesus in terms of listening for the voice, but I also have to live by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me give you this from John 14 and verse 12. Jesus said something very startling here. You guys ready for startling? <laughs> Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works. Everybody say even greater works because I am going to my Father. Okay, so there's this statement, Jesus says, and he ties it together with something. He says, you're going to do greater works, but the reason you're going to be able to do greater works is because I'm going to go to my Father. So how, how does that work, God? How, what, what are you talking about? John chapter 7, if you back up. John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39. Jesus said, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. He had not yet ascended. He had not yet gone to be with the Father. He says there is going to come a day when the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out in a different way than you have ever experienced before. And if you go throughout the whole Old Testament and even during the ministry of Jesus in the Gospels, you'll see the Holy Spirit at work. It starts off in Genesis chapter 1 when the Spirit of God is hovering over the waters and God said, let there be light. You see the Spirit of God in operation and you see it occasionally throughout the Old Testament. You'll see that it came upon David, that it came upon Samson. It would come upon individuals, one here, one there, at one point in history and then another point in history, the Old Testament covering thousands thousands of years of human history, and once in a while, the Holy Spirit would move. So it was available. But Jesus said something different is about to happen. And so in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit is poured out on that day of Pentecost, when they gather together, they're praying in the upper room. And remember, there had been a prophecy in Joel that said, In the last day, saith the Lord, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, upon your sons and your daughters. and They're going to prophesy. and You're going to see signs and wonders and dreams and visions. That was the prophecy of it. And here it happens in the book of Acts chapter 2. And 
people are responding to what's going on, and they're asking Peter, what, what happened there? And so Peter is preaching a sermon to them about Jesus, and this is what he says, John chapter 7, or I'm sorry, Acts chapter 2. Remember, he already said, you're going to do greater works because I'm going to go to my Father. This is what he says in Acts chapter 2. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, Jesus has ascended. He has gone to the Father. He's been glorified. There he is. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, He has poured out this which you now see and hear. The reason that we will be able to do greater works because He goes to the Father is because when He goes to the Father, He pours out the Spirit upon us and fills us. And it's not just a filling for one person five years ago and one person next year and one person. It's for all flesh. It's for anybody that will open their heart and their mind to Jesus. He will pour out the Holy Spirit on us. And when we live in the power of the Spirit, we will see His kingdom established. So what's that going to look like? Robin, go ahead. Put my wife to work over here. One marriage life group, and I've already got her. No, not. (laughs) I'm in so much trouble right now. I know when we're operating in our flesh, it is so difficult to manifest the kingdom. And we'll say things, and we'll make decisions that are not in line with the will of God or the kingdom of God. But this is what it's going to look like. You're going to begin listening to the voice of God. I just I declare that over you right now. You're going to begin to, you're going to be listening to the voice of God. He that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying, that the, the things that have blocked your hearing are going to be removed, and you're going to hear the voice of God. You're going to be living by the power of the Spirit of God, and where you have struggled in the past with what you've said, what you've decided, the Spirit of God is going to be with you and in you, flowing through you and out of you. So you're going to begin to speak life to your spouse. Maybe you haven't been speaking that way. You're going to begin speaking life to your spouse, to your husband or to your wife. And the kingdom of God will be there. In the morning, the kids are going to be getting ready for school and Maybe in the past it's always been, well, did you, did you get your homework done? Did you, did you make your bed? Why, why isn't your homework done? Why haven't you done what you're supposed to do? And all of a sudden the day is starting off in the wrong way. No, now you're going to be declaring over your children, son, daughter, you are created in the image of God. And God has a purpose and a plan for you. You know what? I really wish your homework was done right now. But regardless of whether that bed is made perfectly or whether you've perfectly done every work that you were supposed to do for homework, you are a child of God, made in the image of God, and God has a purpose and a plan for you. And when you speak those words, the kingdom of God will be there. You're going to start listening this week. I'm just speaking this over you right now. You're going to start listening this week, and you're going to have an opportunity to bring hope to somebody at your job. It's going to be a colleague, a co-worker, and there's going to be a moment that comes up, and you know that in that moment, this is what God is saying to me. I need to share this with you just, just a moment. I really feel like you don't, have to, you don't have to declare it. You don't have to look at that person and say, by the way, thus saith the Lord, and then they run out the door because they're scared to death. You just say, listen, I just feel like that God wants me to tell you this. I just feel like this. I mean, I could be wrong, but I, I think this is what the Lord is saying, and you're going to share that with them, and you're going to find out when you do that co-worker is going to look at you and go, I'm so glad that you responded because I've been feeling something on the inside of me. There's an awakening of a desire towards something, and I don't know exactly what it is or what to do. And in that moment when you share that with them, the kingdom of God will be there. You're going to pray for somebody's healing, and the kingdom will be there. i got to stop. Stand to your feet. We're going to pray together. I want to pray a couple of things. 
First of all, I want to pray for this church family. And I'm including everybody. I'm including everybody that's in this house. I'm including everybody that traveled. I'm including everybody that's still drooling on their pillow because they forgot about time change. (laughs) I want us to pray your kingdom come. And I want us to be very specific about that. I want us to pray, God, let us hear your voice and let us be filled with the power of your spirit. And so I'm going I'm to actually begin to pray at one point as we're praying this. I'm going to actually begin to pray, God, fill me. Fill me. And I want, you to, I want you to do that. I want you just to pray, God, I want you to fill me. The reason why I'm saying this is because in the book of Acts, when God poured his spirit out in Acts chapter 2, it was a powerful, transformative, life-changing experience. But the same people that were filled in Acts chapter 2 were filled again in Acts chapter 4. And some were filled again in 5 and 8 and 9. The same people were filled over and over again. The, the, the experience, the empowering of the Holy Spirit is not a one and done thing. It is a lifelong access to the presence and the power of God. And so, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I'm filled too much up on news. I want to drain that out and say, God, fill me with your spirit. So we're going to pray that way as well. So I want to pray, God, I want to listen for your voice, and I want to be empowered by your spirit. Would you pray with me right now? Father, right now, I'm praying for every single person here at Life Church, God, those who call this church their home. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your kingdom would come and that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven, God. Let it be done right here and right now. I am praying for people in this house who have had a hard time hearing your voice lately and maybe it's because they've been listening to so many other voices. Maybe they've been distracted. Maybe they just haven't been intentional about listening. But I'm praying, God, that you would remove every obstacle to the voice of God in every heart right now and that we would begin to listen and to hear clearly what you are saying to us, God. Let us have ears that can hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Open up our hearts and our ears to your voice. And I am praying right now, God, I'm praying according to your word. Jesus, you told us that that we had a good father. And if even if we knew how to take care of our kids and we were evil, our Heavenly Father will give good things to those of us who ask him, that he will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. And so we do that right now, God. We say, fill us. Fill us to overflowing with the Holy Holy Spirit, right now I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the power of the Spirit of God come upon every person. God, let there be a residing presence and power as they walk out of these doors today and they go into their week, God, spring break or back to work or whatever it is they're doing. Lord, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit would fill us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And if you want that, would you just look to heaven for a moment and say, God, would you fill me? (laughs) I want to encourage you to make that a prayer that you pray every day. God, would you fill me? Now let me do one more thing. If you're in this place, maybe you're watching online, maybe you're hearing it on the radio. You know what it's like to cry. And you know what it's like to mourn. And you know what it's like to deal with sickness and death and all of the other things that are common to our broken world. Remember, I told you that that coming kingdom is a place where there is no sorrow. There is no tears. There are no tears. There are no suffering. But here's what God is saying to you today. He can take that future kingdom and He can bring it into this world. And for those of you that have been crying, He can bring healing. For those of you that have been hurting, He's going to bring healing. For those of you that have experienced loss, He is going to come alongside you and you're going to know that you are not alone. Because this is what he's saying to you today. The one that sits on the throne is saying, Behold, I make all things new. So I want to pray for those of you that are in that position today. And if you're not in that position, I want you just to close your eyes and for a moment lift up your brothers and sisters that may be suffering. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, 
we recognize we recognize that this world is a broken place and that we are broken people. And God, we go through the, the pain and the agony, not just physical pain. We deal with that, God, disease and suffering and all of that. But we also deal with so much other stuff that comes from relationships and brokenness, God, and, and the choices of other people and our own choices, God. And So there's been so many tears and so much suffering and so much loss. And there are people here right now that are grieving because of the pain and the suffering and the loss. But God, we lift this up to you. Just as we lift up everything to you, God, we lift up the hurt, the trauma, the experience, the pain, the suffering, the tears, the sorrow. And God, I'm asking you to bring that kingdom that is from another world into this world and let it be manifested in their lives. God, I pray that you would wrap your arms around them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that you would just let them hear your voice speaking over them. Behold, I make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. You. Let that be done, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Guys, could we do just one thing? Because the kingdom is here, and because the king is here, could we just lift our hands to him right now? And let's just acknowledge his presence in this place. Lift up your voice in whatever way you want, and just engage with him, Father. Thank you for being in this house. Thank you for being the King of Kings. God, thank you. Thank you for letting us be a part of your kingdom. Thank you, God, for a place where you rule and you reign. You have our best interest at heart, God. You, you love us and you care for us. We thank you, God, for who you are. And we declare today that you are the King. There is no King beside you. There is no God beside you. You are the one and you are the only we bow our hearts to you and we serve you and we worship you and we praise you because you are God and God alone. And we declare this in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody that just loves God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, would you just shout out amen? amen. Well, one more time, would you shout out amen? amen? Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Brother Manny's coming. Amen. I think what we need to do, we didn't really have it set, if Mark or, or if Robin wants to keep playing, we can just have our, our ministry te team come up. Danny and Ramona and Laddie, if you'll come forward. Um, Isabel, will you come in? Marie. Um, these are people that we, we trust and, and believe will help you with your faith and whatever need that you have. And so in response to this morning's message, I'm just going to give it a few, just a few minutes. We have a little bit of time um, still, but I think we just, there's some folks here that just need somebody to connect with their faith and, and just in whatever need that you have. And so as uh, one of the sea graves continues to play, will you just take a few moments to come forward and, and just connect with somebody and, and let them pray for you today.
it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken Great your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath Amen. Thank you, team, for helping us this morning. Thank you to those that responded. We want to welcome all of those. You may be seated for a few moments. We want to welcome all of our guests and visitors. If you'll give them a hand this morning. And we want to welcome those that are joining us online through Facebook and the radio this morning. We thank you for being here. If this is your first time ever coming to Life Church, I'm going to ask you just to pull your cell phone out. And I need you to text the word guest, G-U-E-S-T. And if this is your first time here, text the word guest. And here's the number to text it to, 432-226-7767. This is your first time, your first time guest. I want to be able to connect with you this week and to give you a call or send you an email and just let you know that we're praying for you. Again, the number is 432-226-7775 and text the word guest, and I'd love to connect with you this week. In the seat pocket in front of you, there's a connect card, and if you don't want to do text, you can fill out that card and let us know that you are a first time guest. I'll still reach out to you that way. And then also there's an opportunity for you to uh, share a praise report or a prayer request on the back of that card. Our staff prays every Monday morning for our needs right here in, the, in this family. And so we've been faithful to do that, and we're also seeing God moving. We have just heard a couple of reports this morning. Uh, last week we prayed for uh, 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 one of the members, his dad or brother was going in for a colonoscopy, and it's not cancerous. So thank God. And so, you know, we're seeing God answer prayers. And so we would love to pray for you and praise and, and, and rejoice with you with what God is doing. Our young people are having a dessert and dinner, a dinner and dessert auction on Sunday, March 26th. They're raising money to go to summer camp. It's $5 for an individual or $20 for a family. They are needing, they're still needing some desserts for the auction. So if you have a yummy dessert that you'd like to donate and auction off, to help the kids raise money for camp, there's a sign-up sheet at the back table if you'll do that today. Our next baptism class will be next Sunday, March 19th. If you'd like to get baptized next month, please be sure you attend that class and sign up. Uh, Pastor Mark and I will be doing that class. Um, next, Our next Journey to Life class will be April 19th and 26th. This is an opportunity for those that have been coming to Life Church for a while and you're saying, Pastor Manny, I'd love to, to be a life partner and get more involved and get connected here at Life Church. We'd like to be a part of this and be a life partner. Sign up for that class at the back. 
in two weeks, March 26th, we'll have our prayer, our personal prayer moments. We have our prayer team ready to meet you in your faith and help agree with you with whatever you need prayer for. And that happens between 4 and 6 on the, la the fourth Sunday of every month. So March 26th, they'll be in the next building. But you do need to uh, sign up for a time slot. Uh, just don't show up. Uh, we just want to make sure that, that we have enough uh, help covered and enough people there to pray. So please sign up for a time slot at the back table. Some of you did pick up some Easter eggs on, on your way out last week. We thank you very much for helping our kids uh, get ready for their Easter egg hunt on Easter Sunday. And so there's eggs still to be filled, but there's also an empty basket in there. If you have your, bag, your Easter eggs to return, you can return those and fill that basket. You can bring them back next week if you need to. Ladies and, and brothers, we have a breakfast and church work day on April 1st. That's a Saturday. We need some help getting this campus ready for Easter. Easter is right around the corner. How many are excited about that? Just about 10 of you are. Okay, I'll see you on Easter. I'll, I'll, I'll see you on Easter, but we're, we need some help getting this campus ready for Easter. It's what we call our spring clean, clean around here, the campus. And so if you can join us on that day, we'd really appreciate it. Kind of need to get a count because uh, we'll be doing some cooking for breakfast that morning and getting uh, get our tummies filled and, and our bodies some energy to get ready to clean. The last announcement I have for you, as Pastor Mark mentioned, this is spring break. So the Life Church office will be closed at noon Tuesday through the end of the week for our families and, and all of you all to enjoy the week. And so there will be no meetings at all this week. Um, no life groups, no marriage group, no life group on Thursday. No youth, no neighbor to neighbor. Spend, take your family, do something with your family. Do something with your family this week. Get some, some time in and enjoy spring break. I do believe uh, Monday night at 6, Revelation Wellness with Katie will still happen. And then Revelation Wellness on Thursday with Angela will still happen in the next building. Okay? How many of you are ready to worship the Lord with your tithes and giving? Amen. Ushers, if you'll come at this time. And if you filled out one of those connection cards, this is the time where you can drop that connection card in this bucket as it goes by. And then the screen, you can see there are many ways to, several ways for you to give. You can do it here in person, online, or through text. And so if you'll pray with me as we pray for the offering. Father, we thank you again for this morning's service, this message, your word for us today. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to bless your people as they give. And Lord, remember those that are in need today. We love you and we thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. together and do our declaration. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. May the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Y'all have a great week. Mm -hmm.